I have spent over a month torturing the barista maker. Heck, we even got a head barista to compare it to a $16,000 commercial espresso machine. From throwing different milks at it, testing performance with different volumes of liquid to extensive temperature tests, this thing has been put through the ringer because that is how we believe proper reviews are done. So here's every pro, every con, and a whole bunch of essential tips and tricks to make your milkiest dreams come true. For years, people who didn't have an espresso machine used these frothers to make shaving foam to put in their coffee drinks. Then some genius somewhere figured out that you could put milk in a French press and jerk it off to get microfoam, but that was a bit messy and cumbersome, so it never really caught on. Fast forward to 2020 and Subminimal took this French press idea and invented the Nanofoamer, which I still think is super cool. It used a tiny propeller to force milk through a fine mesh screen to create cafe quality microfoam. This has since been refined and the company now has three main products, the Nanofoamer V2, the Lithium and their flagship, the Pro. They haven't had any competition until now. Dreo is a household appliance brand that makes products ranging from fans to air fryers and they recently launched this, the Barista Maker, which goes head to head with the Nanofoma Pro. I've been using it for about a month now, and here are my thoughts wrapped into an in-depth RMC review. Let's go. Now, before we get started, this product was sent to us by Dreo, no money exchange hands. They've had absolutely no say in what we've put in this video, and they don't get to watch it before any of you do. A massive thanks to Banky Coffee for letting us film at that beautiful cafe and training center. If you're in Bangalore, definitely check it out. Thanks to Karthik, the head barista, for lending us his sick latte art skills and Jotsna for organizing things. Okay, I'm gonna try something different with this one and skip the foreplay and dive right in. So this is the barista maker and is essentially a fancy milk frother. It has three parts, the lid, the pitcher, and the base, which has the heating element and all of your controls. It also comes with two different tips and I'll tell you what they do in a second. So you put your milk in here, shut it, and use the controls to either froth or stir. Yes, it has two functions. Now, coming down to the controls, you have a nice display in the middle, touch controls on either side, and a start-stop button below. On the left is all of your frothing or texturing, and on the right is all stirring. So when it comes to the texturing, the button above lets you select the type of milk, right from dairy to oat to almond to whatever else we milk these days. And the button on the bottom is where you select the drink type, whether that's a latte or a flat white or cappuccino. You can even do cold and hot foam. So those are all the functions here. And on the right side is all of your stir settings. Now this is where the barista maker goes beyond just coffee and allows you to do drinks like protein shakes, hot chocolate, matcha, and so on. And here the top button toggles between low and high to set the speed of rotation. And the button at the bottom cycles all the way from 55 to 75 degrees Celsius, which I think is a really nice range to have. And you can also set it to cold stir. Unfortunately, you can't set a custom temperature for the froth drinks, and I really hope they add this functionality in. Now, once you select your options for either frothing or stirring, you can hit start. And before you go, it tells you which tip to use. I found this to be a very useful reminder. Like I mentioned earlier, this ships with two separate tips, one which will look familiar and is your more traditional style frother. The circular spring creates dry foam that's very stiff or it's used for the stirring of drinks. The impeller tip, which is the more interesting one, has the fins and fine mesh screen like we saw first on the nano foamers. This tip is used for drinks like cappuccinos and flat whites where you require silky microfoam. So that's basically how this thing works. And once you hit go, it shows you a countdown timer if you're using options on the left so you know exactly when it's gonna be done. On the right, it just keeps going until it hits the target temperature. Okay, coming to performance, when testing a machine like this, I like to broadly look at three things. One is texture from a latte art perspective. Two is texture from a mouthfeel and taste perspective. And three is temperature, which is super important, but I haven't seen covered in depth on any other reviews of this machine. Okay, let's go in order. So my latte art skills are okay at best. So when a company claims cafe quality milk, I think we need a better candidate to test it. So we headed over to Banky Coffee and got this guy to help us out. Karthik is the head barista here and his sick latte art skills are just what we needed to compare the Dreo Barista Maker to the San Remo Opera. And this is how it went down. To kick things off, he poured this beautiful six stack tulip that was textured to perfection on the San Remo. But this is a machine he's used to. So let's see what happened on his first attempt with the Dreo. He used the same milk, filled it to the recommended level and picked flat white. Three hours and 30 minutes later, it was ready to go. Yeah, it feels painfully slow when compared to a commercial machine, but let's check out the pour. Okay, things weren't looking good. 
clearly the Dreo didn't produce nearly enough microfoam to pour any sort of art. So the combination of the flat white setting brand of milk and the volume that we were using, we were just not getting enough aeration. So what we decided to try is using less milk, the cappuccino setting to increase aeration time and pour into a smaller cup and we were off to the races. You can see that it took just a few seconds for Karthik to adjust to the flow and by stack three, he seems fully in control and we have something pretty legit for a first attempt. To keep things interesting, we then switched to oat milk using the same settings and things got a lot more interesting. Now, before I show you the pour, what I found fascinating is just from inspecting the pitcher and the way that the milk swirled in it, Karthik was able to gauge that he could pour something a lot more complex. That comes from experience. Okay, here's what he did. Yep. A beautiful rosetta. At this point, Karthik was feeling pretty confident that he could do better with the regular dairy milk, so we refill the pitcher, hit go, and while we wait, here's some more latte art porn for your viewing pleasure. All right, let's see how the second attempt went. And voila, another lovely rosetta. So yeah, while there is a bit of trial and error to get the right texture from this machine, it is absolutely capable of cafe quality microfoam. The good thing is, once you have the settings dialed in for a particular brand of milk, it's very consistent. Now, in terms of taste and mouthfeel, it was on par and even beat the commercial machine in some cases. Like I said, I've been using this for over a month now, and even when I couldn't pour the best latte art, I still love the texture and the quality of the microphone that it produced. Now, coming to temperature, I'm happy to report that the barista maker is very accurate, stopping within a degree or two of the set temperature when stirring drinks, and consistently landing at the same temperature for fraught drinks. But there are a couple of issues, one pretty big one, but I'll get to these in a second. Stick around because I have a workaround. Okay, I tested both the flat white and cappuccino setting multiple times with the pitcher filled to the min line, and it always landed somewhere between 60 and 65 degrees Celsius. It hit this target irrespective of the starting temperature of the milk, which I thought is super cool. You can put room temperature milk in here and it'll give you beautifully textured microfoam at the right temperature. You can't really do this with a steam one because the milk will get too hot before you're able to incorporate the microfoam fully. So what are the issues? Well, one quirk I found is that if you let the milk sit in the pitcher after a program is completed, it tends to keep getting hotter. So I recommend transferring it as soon as it's done. The other con, which I think is a pretty big issue, is that the target temperature of the froth drinks seems to drop as you increase the volume of liquid. If I textured milk filled halfway into the latte art marking instead of the min line, it only managed to hit 56 degrees Celsius. And I don't know about you, but that's a bit too cold for me. Don't worry. Like I said, there's a workaround. Just start with warmer milk. I found that starting with milk at 30 degrees Celsius as opposed to 15 degrees straight out of the fridge allowed it to get to 60 degrees, which is a much better drinking temperature. But if you wanted to push that up a few degrees more, then you can try running the stir cycle on low for say 30 seconds and then run the cappuccino or flat white cycle and you should be able to hit around 63, 64. So yeah, play around with different starting temperatures and see what works for you. It's a bit hacky but it works. Now the good news is the stir operation doesn't seem to be affected by this. So Dreo, if you're watching, can you please just add temperature control to the froth drinks? All the hardware is in place anyway. That about sums up temperature. Now, one last aspect of performance that I should mention is the stir operation, which is surprisingly useful and works really well. Just make sure you add the liquid in first and then the powder to get the best results. So yeah, I mean, the results speak for themselves. You saw the pores, and if you had a chance to taste these drinks, you wouldn't be able to tell which ones were steamed on the opera and which were made with the barista maker. Now, performance is only part of the picture, so let's look at the other, arguably more important part, UX. Is the process of getting to these excellent results an enjoyable one? Now, speaking of enjoyable experiences, I've consumed lethal amounts of dairy to test this product, and you also won't see any discount codes or affiliate links directly to a particular product on any of our reviews to further reduce bias. So if you enjoy our content, then the easiest way to support this channel is to like and subscribe. Okay, when it comes to user experience, I'm gonna start with what I really like and then cover what I don't. So straight off the bat, it's a pretty easy device to use and it's very versatile. I like that it goes beyond just coffee. So you can do your cappuccinos and flat whites, but you can also do coffee adjacent drinks and it does that really well. I didn't think I would use this, but who doesn't like stirring shit up? Now, when it comes to the coffee specific stuff where it should excel, it absolutely does. As we just saw, the texture is excellent. You get silky smooth microfoam. 
It's on par, I would say, with the Nanoformer Pro and your latte art is only limited by your skill. Okay, the, the build quality is pretty good overall. The base and handle feel a tad cheap, but nothing too concerning. And all of the important stuff is metal. The only thing that feels a bit flimsy is the impeller tip and it's a critical part. I tend to break shit, so I would probably get a spare along with the device, so I have a backup in case things go south. Now, you might think I'm crazy, but the biggest reason I'd recommend this product is its ease of cleaning. All of you folks scraping burnt milk off the bottom of your Nanoforma Pro Gen 1 while watching this know just how important it is. Cleaning and maintenance for a product that is used to heat milk is so clutch that I can't even emphasize it enough. And there are three things that the Dreo does that make it an absolute dream to clean. The first is the design of the pitcher itself. The opening is nice and large. And just like I mentioned with the Meraki water tank, I can get these freakishly large hands in there and clean it properly. And the cherry on top is that it's fully stainless steel, so no coating and shit to worry about. The second thing is that it's slow. You may be wondering, hey, that doesn't sound like a positive. Well, slow gradual heating of milk dramatically reduces scorching. In fact, there is no scorching or burning of milk on this device whatsoever, even if you go all the way up to 75 on the stir mode. You get a few deposits of milk fat on the base, but they wipe away super easily. And saving the best for last, the third thing is having the pitcher be a separate piece. I love this. In fact, I floated this very idea to Subminimal in my Nanoforma Pro review. Now, listen, the Gen 2 is a huge improvement and it has an IPX5 rating, making it splash resistant, but this is still way better. The fact that you have a separate piece that has no electronics is freaking awesome and you can even chuck it in the dishwasher. So yeah, the ease of cleaning is definitely a huge win for the Dreo. The only thing I would say needs a little extra attention in terms of cleaning is the mesh on the impeller tip. Just make sure you rinse it out right after using it to avoid any clogging and nastiness. But now, let's look at some of the cons. The first small one would be the minimum liquid required for this to function properly. Here, the min line is right at 160 ml. For comparison, the Nanoforma is at 120. Now, to be fair, I've never got great results with the Nanoforma Pro filling it to the bare minimum. And as you saw from our tests, we got the best results at the minimum line for the kind of milk we were using. I was worried that I would need the recommended volume of around 230 mils of liquid in order to be able to do proper latte art. Luckily, that wasn't the case for me, but your mileage may vary depending on the milk that you use. One thing I find really funny is how a lot of our Indian and European subscribers always ask about how little milk they can use while the Americans always want to know how big of a drink they can make. I just found that funny. Anyway, based on the markings in here, the largest drink that you can texture is around 270 mils, which is around nine ounces. And the largest drink that you can stir is 460 ml or around 15 and a half ounces. Now, staying on the topic of latte art, all of the marketing claims that you can use the built-in pitcher. In my opinion, you have to be a very experienced latte artist to pour anything more detailed with this. The shape, balance, and the large spout are just not great for anything other than basic tulips for someone who's just starting out or even someone more intermediate like me. In fact, even Karthik felt the same way about this pitcher. It's very tricky to control the flow, so unless you're Emily Bryant, I'd invest in a good pitcher for latte art if that's a skill that you want to hone. Now this next one, I've already mentioned a bunch of times, but I would love to have temperature control for textured drinks like flat whites and cappuccinos. Here, I'm at the mercy of the device, so I wish that range of 55 to 75 was there on this end too. Okay, let's talk about the controls for a minute. Initially, it seems really intuitive and beginner friendly. It's got all of the drink names, the milk names, and all you need to do is choose the right combo and hit go, right? Well, that's what I thought when I started using it, but I very quickly ran into some issues. Not all oat milks, almond milks are made equal. So if you pick the oat milk option and you don't get enough foam or you get too much foam, then what do you do? Do you switch to almond milk or do you switch from cappuccino to flat white? It's a bit confusing and it requires a bit of faff to figure out which programs create more foam and which ones less. Whereas with something like the Nanoforma Pro, which seems a little abstract and confusing upfront, actually makes a lot of logical sense once you start using it. The higher the number you set, the more foam you get, and going from black to blue to green again progressively gets you more foam. But the new Gen 2 now adds another variable into the mix of impeller depth, so I guess it's a tie here. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I would still pick the Nanoforma. Okay, this next complaint is more subjective. I'm not a big fan of the aesthetic. It's got this kitchen appliance look, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't quite fit in on a modern coffee bar. So I would rather keep this in my kitchen. Well, 
it does more than just coffee, so I guess it all works out. Oh, and it's also quite large. Okay, another thing that I mentioned as a positive earlier could also be a negative, especially for someone who's used to steaming. This is slow. We're talking three plus minutes to texture for a flat white. If you have young kids, that's a full night's sleep right there. Also, if you don't want your shots sitting around, then you need to start the barista maker around two minutes, 45 seconds before you hit go on your espresso machine. Now the catch is if your shot doesn't pull right, you're a bit screwed. So that about sums up my experience with the Dreo Barista Maker. And honestly, if you zoom out a little, then you'll see that the pros far outweigh the cons. And I really enjoy using this thing. Now let's look at price and who this product is for. So we've all seen how well this thing performs and save for a few minor annoyances, anyone who enjoys coffee with milk and doesn't have an espresso machine or has a fully manual one like the Flare would love the Barista Maker. To be honest, this outperforms steaming on a lot of espresso machines as the lack of dilution produces richer and creamier texture and the learning curve is way more shallow. So if you manage to snag the Kickstarter price, then I think you got yourself a great deal. There's only one other device that I know of that does this. I mean the microphone part and that's the Nanoforma Pro, which currently retails at 159 US dollars. So even at the MRP of 99 US dollars, the Barista Maker seems to be great value. Now, if you're on a tight budget and you want near identical results, then I still highly recommend the Nanoforma Lithium. Now you do need to heat the milk separately and the learning curve is a tad steeper, but with a little bit of practice, you can get amazing results. Well, that's a wrap. If you found this helpful or at least entertaining, then a like and sub would be awesome. Like I said, it's the simplest way to support the channel. I know, I'm really milking the call to action, but hey, what better video to do it on than this one? But now I'll just say thank you so much for watching and brew our arms safe.